Okay, Mr. Where will it be? Do you want to go to a sly grog shop? Or... Oh, hello, ain't you that Bert Newton? Yes, I am, as a matter of fact. Would you take me, please, to, to Channel 9? Wait till my missus finds out that I've had Bert Newton in the car. Oh, she loves you. Thank you. She does. She raves Good. on all day well, about yeah. how funny you are. Good. Well, I'm a, a little bit of a hurry, <laughs> if you don't mind. Ladies and gentlemen, Bert Newton. My name is Bert Newton. <laughs> Big deal. Where's that lanky side kick of yours? <laughs> Hello, I'm Don Lane. Welcome to the best of Bert Newton. Tonight we pay tribute to one of the greatest and most enduring Australian-born television stars ever, my man Bertram. Bert's brilliant career is still going strong, but our journey really starts right here in Studio 9. Now they make who wants to be a millionaire in here, but it's where Bert spent most of his 27 years at the Nine Network. What sets those years apart? What makes them Bert's best? It's the one magic ingredient that Bert used to perfection. A live studio audience. With a live audience to play to, even Bert's ads were legendary. Um, what's this? What are you doing? I'm going to do uh -huh. the famous blindfold test. But, but no, you're and not. Then we'll get to the coffee, mate. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll but bet I win. Do. I'll bet I win again. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't do that. Come I'm, on, come on, Rachel. No, I don't know what you're going to give me. You wait, wait, wait a minute. I'll, I'll hold no, it down. No. I'll hold it down there so you can't do it. Oh, don't. Look now, just like, the old, just like the old parties. You, no. Well, hang on a second. <laughs> Guess who? <laughs> what I'm going to do <laughs> is I'm going to give you yeah. a normal coffee. Oh, right. right. And then after the normal one, I'll give you the coffee, mate. You're not going to put soap suds or anything. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Can you okay. see okay? Yeah, oh, right, terrific. Of course you can. <laughs> How many fingers am I holding up? One with five. <laughs> That's it. One okay, with you go. coffee, mate. <laughs> right, and one ordinary coffee. Won't be a second. Okay. Here we go. You're not really. You promise you're not doing anything funny. Pardon? No, not for years. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Patty can vouch for that. I can tell you that. Mm. Yeah. What do you think? Okay. Nice. Yes. You sure? Mm, very nice. Is it, is, it, is it really, really nice? It tastes great, actually. Mm. Smooth and creamy. Well, that's the ordinary coffee. You shouldn't have. Said that. <laughs> All right, we'll try this one now. This would be a good one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Where am I? Right here. You're right here channel right. nine. You remember channel nine? Don and Bert? Yeah, Don and Bert. Mmm, right. <laughs> okay. that's beautiful. Is, really is, smooth. Is, <laughs> is it even even better? Even better. Even, even better. Sue McIntosh, a good sport, and incidentally, Jason Donovan's mom. <laughs> Now, in this ad, we test a water filter. Now, by rights, this wine should turn into water. We're, we're going to do it the other way around, but somebody else holds the rights. <laughs> Let's have a try. Now, this is ordinary wine, untouched, except by a couple of prop boys just before the show. This is a real... Look, if you pour that into here, if you pour that into that glass, have a look at the colour of that, and you can't tell me that that's not filtered. Look at that. That's yeah. amazing. Even if it's only that colour, it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, just look at the difference in the color. If you got a color in there like that, yeah. look at that. You can see the difference in that color between what there is down there and the bottom of that. That's amazing. You bet your bum. I mean, if that look, just like the whole glass, if you get a full glass of that like that, yeah. right, that one, and you put that through that filter, and you put it in there, it could be pretty good. I'll ask you a question. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly? Yes. Are you, are you a puff? No. <laughs> No matter what we sold, we sold it with laughs. Yes. That's as translucent as the finest china, but it takes a lot of beating. Ha, ha. Beat it. Beat it. Show them how you can beat it. This is for the, uh, the, uh... Uh, com comestate. Um, je vert. Uh, vous... Italiano, <laughs> you want fun? <laughs> do what I do. Open up your Legos. <laughs> what? 
today you put some coffee made in like that? And then Sean, you I put it in don't the don't water. Don't. Some water like that and put You take sugar. Oh, sugar's nice. Ah, then you drink it. It's lovely. Look, you get all little brown bits. Bert was always willing to test a new to, product. What, is it, what does this do? It's supposed to clean your face and your body. Well, it does. It, it, it cleans your face and also it's it's wonderful for the eyes, Don. <laughs> it, it's, it's magnificent. Right, one more time. Last time, seven seconds. Okay. This I'll is the last treatment, right? All right, I'll count seven seconds. One, two, Talking on the phone. Don, I could have drowned. Of course, before we teamed up, Bird could do a terrific and funny sales pitch if that other great talent, Graham Kennedy, would only let him. Correct. And this is my can of new Johnson Protector. <laughs> it's the first sharp shooting insect spray. I can't get it out. <laughs> can you help me? Can you help me? Again? I just have to move this here. <laughs> move that. I've got to take it over there because they want oh, it. Okay, it. we'll just leave it. Can What's you, wrong? What I can't, can't get it out. <coughs> I'll do that for you. Right. You've got to breathe in. Oh, You've got to get that. Almost kills you, doesn't it? Yeah, there you are. Oh, that's better. Thank you. I'll just move this pussy. Okay. Here. I, al <laughs> I always carry this with me, you know, because you never. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it won't fit through the hole. <laughs> Why don't you go first? Yeah. And then try. Oh, that's a good idea. You're right? Yep. No. Well, well, I have to put it over okay, here. Okay, right, right. Well, just... <laughs> you know, you never know when those nasty flies and monkeys... <laughs> what have you done? I'm, 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 I've got to move the big uh, can of uh, pussy because of the next act. Well, can which... I help you? No, no, just go ahead and do that. Where do you have to stick it? <laughs> over there, over there. Well, get the cross there. I'll yeah, talk about protecting. Right. Yeah. Okay. I won't disturb you, mate. Okay, right. Go ahead and do right. the thing. You know. As I was saying, I always carry Johnson's protector because you never know when flies and mosses will strike, particularly. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> it fell out. Oh, it up. As I was saying, you'll never know when. <laughs> when those nasty mosses and flies will strike. But there is a catch. Bert would do anything to sell a product, even one as simple as dog shampoo. Not on me, Graham. Sorry. Not on me. <laughs> now, you can use plenty of it. Don't be frightened. Dogs love it. Yes. Oh, that's a boy. Sit. Oh, pardon me. Sit. <laughs> Shellguard has done thing, for it? Bert Newton since I shampooed him last week. Oh, what a what a bad thing. Look, look how good he looks. His coat is shiny. <laughs> his, his little nose is moist. <laughs> yeah, he is too. And he finds it damn near impossible to go past a tree without no, 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 no. <laughs> that's, that's, that's disgraceful. By the way. Shut your big face! <laughs> It's Mrs. Fisher. Oh, no, wasn't that funny last week in the bath? It was, it was hilarious. You must have had a ball, did you? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying anything. It didn't sell very much dog shampoo, but we've had 56 inquiries from people who want to bath me. <laughs> <laughs> and three of them were from girls. <laughs> Waka 
To get yourself in meditation, you have to say, Wagga Wagga Nala Nala Violet Crumble Rooty Hill. Wagga Wagga Nala Nala Violet Crumble Rooty Hill. Ah, but one must be in the snapdragon position. What's the snapdragon? As against the lotus position. <laughs> What's the snapdragon? I will, may I have a use of your chair over there? You certainly may. Yes. Why are, you, why are all your sentences going up on the end? I used to be Ted Lewis. Oh. <laughs> okay, now what we do here, one must, this is, must always check very carefully. Wagga wagga dala dala vile crumble rooty hill. What about your foot? <laughs> I cannot move. Uh, no, let me. I will. I will tell you, an honourable brother. If you play it too early, I will come up there and fracture I... your skull with my hand. Can I? You're not a swami. What are you? Uh, not a swami. No. No. Well, I, I. 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 I bathe every day. You're a mammy, aren't you? I, you must put one leg up like so. Are you with me? Would you please put one leg up like so? <laughs> do you mind? Yes, I do. You know something, sir? <laughs> you turn me on. <laughs> now, this is Snapdragon now, and you put other leg over yonder. Now, through there. <laughs> now we start. Okay, you know what to say, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, I feel more like Esther Williams. Can I tell you something honestly? What yes. you, you're a mammy, you're not a swami. What are you? I, I can't call you a swami. What are I you? Am, I am an Indian Kungana. <laughs> yes, I am. I am one of those men that sits on the mountain and all the disciples say, are you going to come down? <laughs> You're making a fool of yourself up there. Can I tell you something? Can I get out of this bloody no, no. position? <laughs> In all honesty, that's the best your hair has ever looked. <laughs> <laughs> Kids, you're welcome to another show of Children's Hour. Yeah, isn't this good fun? We're gonna Uncle Bert's out. just been bitten by a spider, a poisonous That's spider. That's because Uncle Bert was trying to do something naughty yeah. for the spider. And unless <laughs> Uncle Dom sucks it better, he might die. <laughs> you. you know, Bert could get away with stuff that no one else could. Now, a great example is from the show in which I interviewed the skeptic, James Randi. <laughs> it started with this famous moment. You said that she was a liar on the no, radio. No. You called her a liar. No. And that woman would no, lie to I anybody. And I don't know whether she's right or wrong, I but she would lie to anybody. We're we'll going for a commercial break, and you can piss That's off. Right. We'll be back with Diana Trapp. You know, there were over 800 complaints about the incident, but it was in the heat of the moment. But what amazed us all was when Bert used the exact same words in a joke one hour later on the same show. We didn't get one single complaint. <laughs> I'd like to be that first. You don't know what to say, do you? You're I was gonna... terrified that you weren't happy with Martha Gardner's wool mix. <laughs> <laughs> Martha, I tried your wool mix on the weekend. Martha, piss off! <laughs> See, Bert could do anything. Well, almost anything. This is uh, a landscape, as you can see, and uh, the idea was we just wanted to do a little funny comedy bit to show off some, some side of Bert that none of you see now. He's actually done this landscape, which, uh, is that terrific? I think it's absolutely brilliant. Thank and uh, you. it just, I'm not thinking it. It surprised me, it surprised me, it surprised me no end that, that, uh, that you had this other talent. Well, I just feel I it is great therapy. Everyone needs something. And yeah. I can tell you, and it probably sounds big deal. Well, it is big deal, but I don't mean big deal and big deal. Tolano's galleries, which are down here a moment, yeah. uh, Patty took this in without my knowing. Patty? Yes. Yeah. And uh, admittedly, she did mention my name, and I'm not too sure whether that brought down the price or up the price. <laughs> <laughs> but That's they funny. have got it, they want it, and they have put a, a claiming price of $5,000 on it, which I think is You're just... You're joking. No? Great. Thank you. That's amazing. Well, 
It's nice to it's nice to know you got something going besides this. I'll tell you what, it's it's great that you got it, and congratulations on the price. I mean, congratulations on a new career. Thanks. <laughs> Is it working for you? I don't know, but I think I love you. <laughs> what we're going to do here is work your groin on the inside what of the leg. What do you lake. think you're going to do here? <laughs> <laughs> Won't hurt, I promise. It's got three speeds. Yeah. Slow, yeah. fast, and make a wish. <laughs> right. 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 We've got to that stage. Now back again. Back again. Back. <laughs> That's, That's it. it. All right. Look at that. $3,000 on hair transplants and bugger in one minute. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, that was good, Doug. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> one button here. Right. I don't know what it does for your weight, but I think I'm in love. <laughs> you never knew what Bert was going to wear on stage. Okay. Sometimes it was better not to see. <laughs> Boy, yes, I wouldn't I know. trust anything, you know what I mean? This is good fun, Don. Is it? How hot is it? Ooh, warm. Oh, very warm. Nice. Yeah. Well, you've got... Hey? You've got... Could you hold these for me, please? <laughs> My rubber ducky doesn't swim very well, No, Don. not to worry. You just stay there, mate, because this is really going to be fun. <laughs> Come on, You're not married. You're not married? <laughs> Get out. Let me in the tub. Wait a minute. Hang on. Just a second. Don. Get what? Women and children first. <laughs> oh, my God. It's the Titanic again. No. I thought you were Seriously. <laughs> I can't swim. Patty, if you're watching, she's doing dreadful things to me. Find out what she's doing. <laughs> oh, Donna, please. Donna, please. Donna. Anyway, Bert, I thought you'd enjoy your. What a way to go. <laughs> yes. It's fantastic. Oh, hang on. I hope you and your girl are all Yes, right. I'll see so, you next Tuesday. Now you know what happened oh. to the Titanic. Lovely. So long, Bert. Bye. It was nice talking to you. And thanks, Take everybody, for the gold. We'll always be for somebody's. If life should reject you, there's me to protect you. And if I say that your tongue is vicious If I call you uncouth It's simply that Who else but a buzz somebody Will sit down and tell you the truth He sings I Nick. Oh, I tell you what I love you doing What? <clears throat> <laughs> She's out of my life <laughs> She's out of my life Don't know what's coming or coming it's not, oh, it's not. You just felt so lonely, oh, I thought I'd Oh, kidding it aside, it really is a magnificent album. Oh, you, I love it. Nice. So we had, a, we had a good time doing it and some great people working on Makes it. Makes a magnificent cheese platter, too. You know, you know. She's out of my life She's out of my life Oh, you're unlucky. There's a record inside the cupboard. She's out of my Have you listened to it yet? Yes, I certainly have. You played have. it on your radio program. I have played to my radio program, a lot of reaction, but I played it again the next day. Right, okay. Yes. <laughs> only know I love you so. He only knows he loves you so. Why did I have to write this song? I'm buggered if I know. I should, should have never let you go. Don, they have that album back. I, I went to the trouble, Don, of, <laughs> of gift wrapping one for, for Fook. I thought it might be nice as a Christmas present, so there you are. Fox Fox Sink. Yeah, Fox Sink. Yes, gift wrapping. Well, what if he wants it? 
Well, Thank you, you very just much. Open yes. on Christmas morning. You'll love yes. it. Yes. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on, just a second, just a minute. Just no, no, it's no, fine. no, 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 that's I fine. Just wanted, I just wanted. That's to... fine. I just thought I'd go. No, no, no. I've worked with you for how many years now? Five and a half years. Yeah, that's enough. But that, it's, it's folks. No, just a minute. Just want to see something. You. Hang on a minute. guy with a record Bert paid out on. Remember this fellow? I just heard the funniest thing I ever heard in my life. This lady down front said, oh, it's Bert. Right. <laughs> my name, my name is Dammit it, Roulette. <laughs> you want some? You like some? Well, I must say, it's, uh, it's really quite wonderful to meet you, actually. Uh, you are a... Uh... I saw that thing, <laughs> and I came out of my bed immediately, but and now I... I love you, I love you! Wait a minute. It's moon face! Hey, Kamal, if you're watching, set the video recorder, because you know we'll get to you later. But Bert is such a lovely guy and makes fun of people in such a nice way that everyone loves him. And I mean everyone. When I turned on the satellite and spoke to the world's biggest stars about what they were working on, you could always guess what their first question was. I have just one question from what? everybody in L.A. That they want to know how Bert's hair is. Oh, it's, a, it's coming in. The crop is not a failure. We can say that. <laughs> OK. You wouldn't know, would you, Don? Seriously. Oh, I've had it yesterday again. Yeah? Uh, day before, 70 transplants. Oh, crap. Which is thrilling. And also, it doesn't affect you in any way at all, which is, is uh, right? which is not. That's good to know. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, your hair, your hair. Oh, my hair! <laughs> 
We got a lot more show for you. What? The hair. The hair. The hair got nothing. So nobody look at the hair. Just stand up. <laughs> Stay that way and we'll change camera angles. Done. Yes. How's the hair? <laughs> you can come and get Peachy, but take it very gently, will you? Because it's right where some plugs are. Who's <laughs> Pin? Hold on. He mightn't be able to write. Here, Peachy, Peachy, Peachy. Oh, Peachy. Uh, Peachy. <laughs> ah, there you go. There hey. you are. Oh. Please. Peachy, three thousand dollars in transplants and ruined by a little bird. Bird had a special thing with animals. Affinity is uh, too strong a word. That reminds me too. Patty asked me to get something on the way home from the show tonight. I just... <laughs> While we're here, I want to say something to you. What? I think I love you. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Congratulations on World Series cricket. Magnificent. <laughs> Hello, Ben, round here. Look, here's Uncle Bert. Hello. Hello. This is only a microphone. <laughs> Yes, he likes it. Ben, and... No. Uh, anyway, um, if my dry cleaner is watching, keep the secret. Um... The winner is... Bert Newton. Well, I... I have never felt as thrilled since rehearsal this afternoon. <laughs> For over 40 years, winning one of these has been the ultimate accolade in Australian television. The TV Week Logie Awards. Bert Newton has won five gold Logies, including his elevation to the Hall of Fame. He compared 18 Logie Awards nights. He's done just about everything but name them. Tonight we're very excited about the Logies, because for the very first time, they're not fixed. No, no, no. <laughs> no so the, very... the Logie Awards have been held for the last 12 years here in the, the Southern Cross Ballroom. Uh, we were going to change this year, but would you believe around Australia that in Melbourne, the, the Southern Cross Ballroom is the, is the only place which really hasn't got down the centre a cricket pitch? And it's... <laughs> oh, I didn't... I didn't realise, sir, that you, that you were here, uh, but I... <laughs> Mike McCall Jones wrote that, sir. <laughs> Isn't he a bad man, eh? Bert was born to host the Logies. Very often, he would reminisce the highlights with me. Sometimes on a Logies telecast, there is a very special moment when you introduce a person who is known right throughout the world, in probably every country of the world. Another legend. Uh, well, probably the only legend, really, that we've had in the Logies. And if I was asked tomorrow, even at this very moment, the one moment that I would like to recapture uh, on all of the, the Logie telecasts I've, I've done, this would be the moment. Mr. John Wayne. <laughs> It really amazes me. How do you do that show every year and still keep you cool? I mean, all those big names. Uh, uh, Raymond Burr, John Wayne, Charlton Heston, uh, Muhammad Ali. I mean, uh, don't, it must be a nerve-wracking experience to, uh, to uh, meet a big star for the first time. Well, if, if they get nervous, they get nervous. <laughs> Thank you. I've got to relax now. Shh. Oh, there's no place like home for here. Okay. You OK? I'm all right now. Yeah. Thank you. This is scary. Oh, look, somebody's fantasy. Gosh, you look great. 
Thank you very much. Someone said to me the other day, there are three ages in life. Youth, middle age, and gee, you look great. And before I came here, um, I asked about you, and they told me that, that Bert Newton had uh, all the charm and the talent of a Bob Hope. And now that I've seen you tonight, you are very charming. <laughs> Just thinking, wouldn't the Southern Cross Ballroom make a beautiful spot for a wedding reception? Is that a proposal of some sort? No, well, no, no, no. no, no David, if I change, you'll be the first. But... <laughs> Best single documentary. Dear Tony, this is the only way I could get in touch with you. was the word to use here tonight. No, it's just a, a little early for that. If you oh. I'd like to wait until we get to the major awards. I've done these special occasion shows for 17 years, and at last I can forget all about it and just... <laughs> relax. You're an amateur, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Bert once told me the full story of his most famous moment on TV ever. To set the scene, here's an old black and white ad featuring a very young Daryl Summers and Bert Colonel Sanders Newton. I love, in fact, I uh, enjoyed so much reading all about your performances at the Logies. Oh, you were so calm. Reading about my... Don't you ever watch the Logies? Oh, I'm not allowed at that right? <laughs> really? I like one! <laughs> I did a whole series of commercials with Graham Kennedy years ago for Colonel Sanders, Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, in which I used to say, I like the boy. Yeah. I like the boy. I like the boy. <laughs> I like the boy. I like the boy. I like the boy. I like the boy. I like the girl. I do like that boy. Now, in America, you don't say that. Now, <laughs> to a black man. Yeah, to a black man. You, you don't, don't say, well, boy, yeah. I have had coffee with Kamal, but he's never complained about it. <laughs> But with Muhammad Ali, who's there, the ex well, whatever he is, and I happen to say, well, whatever he is. very, uh, in it, well, he's out of the country, isn't he? <laughs> I happen to say, innocently, I like the boy, and all of a sudden, all hell broke loose. <laughs> this is going to be a surprise tonight. Well, I, I, I think, yes, I've got to be find out who out there wins this, it will be a shock. <laughs> I like the boy. <laughs> did he say, did you say Roy or boy? I like the boy. There's nothing wrong with saying that. Roy. Yeah. Well, hey, hang on, hang on. No. Really? I'll change religion. I'll do anything for it. I don't care. What's wrong with saying that? I like the boy. Boy, you, who, you I, mean, I mean, I like the man. I like, you, oh, I, yes. Are we facing in the right direction? Whatever you want to do, I don't care. I got a handwritten note from Muhammad Ali mm. in which he made reference to I like the boy. Oh, yeah. uh, and it's something, obviously, that I will keep for the rest of my life. It was something which was completely unintentional on my part, but it was, I thought it was rather nice well, of him to remember it. There's a when he leaned over and he gave you a hug because you wanted to go, Logie. I think that was magnificent, something you can keep the rest of your life where your kids are going to see that. 1978 gold Logie winner, Bert Newton. <laughs> And here, Bert recalls another guest he'll never forget. One bloke who didn't say very much, uh, only because he wasn't there in the room at the time he was supposed to be, was one of the stars of Mod Squad, uh, Michael Cole. <laughs> Have a look at this. Not only is he a fine actor, but he's a great bloke too, and possibly one of the most successful television performers that we know here in Australia anyway. From Mod Squad, Michael Cole. <laughs> In the two years since we last saw him, Mike has lost a lot of weight. Uh, <laughs> Michael Cole uh, eventually got on stage for a Logie presentation, and this is one moment which I shall not forget, and many 
thousands of viewers around Australia will not forget. And remember, this is way back in the time when not even puberty was talked about. <laughs> I, really, I, really know, I really didn't know that this, this was going to happen. And um, I have an affliction. It's called emotion. And... Uh, Oh, shit. Congratulations, Michael. Uh, I might mention to you also, it was my fault. That was one for a particular episode in the series. And Mike just mentioned the particular episode. Um, we have now the announcement this is not happening, of course, is it? It's all about drinks. It's not happening at all. When he uttered that word on, uh, on television, there were 400 calls in after the show complaining about the language. Then on the Sunday, back in those days, they used to replay the Logies on Sunday afternoon, and so they edited that little bit out, and they got 3,000 calls from people complaining that it wasn't in. So, how could you win? And Mike McCoy Jones will verify that. Well, he wanted to make amends, and here he is from Hollywood, no. Michael Cole. Are you sure it's all right oh, to be here? Oh, shit. <laughs> Susan, I've got to explain to you that because I work on radio in the daytime, I don't have the chance of watching Days of Our Lives, but don't... Pity, pity. Well, indeed, well, my whole family watches it. There's a lot to see. Mm. Just explain to me... <laughs> <laughs> Just explain to me, if you can, what's happening with Days of Our Lives at the moment. Now, I know my, my favourite character is Mickey. What's, what's happened with Mickey? What's happening with Mickey? Well, I think his amnesia has cleared up. Mm, that's good. Uh, let's see, that came on after the stroke and the massive heart attack. <laughs> he was in the hospital and just feeling a lot better after the triple bypass surgery. Mm. <laughs> then he went into the hinterland and found a farm girl, and that was fine until his son came to visit him and the hay wagon fell on his chest. Yeah. He just hung Mickey's ball on the Christmas tree. Oh, lovely. It's, you see, Mickey only has one ball. Everybody else has two. I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, that's the whole thing. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you very much for being with us. And this is the Memorial Michael Cole Award I'm giving to Patty Weaver. No, I said, how many times have you been married in the series? Well, I have this child, you see. You have a child? But that... Out of wedlock? Right, yes, quite. Is he still living? He's 27 years old now. And obviously, he would have to be for the, the plot of homosexual, is he? Yes. Yeah. Oh, is he? Oh, yes. <laughs> is he really? <laughs> well, nobody knows but his agent. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Crawford and Mr. Stevens, for letting me be in Young Ramsey. And thank you, my... Um, my... agent. <laughs> And thank you, my first directed Richard McCarthy, who showed me what acting was really like. <laughs> and thank you, TV Week, for letting me be on your show. Dr. Peter. Did you really cry? No. no. <laughs> well, how did, how did you appear to cry and you didn't cry? They put... They put Oh, I'm um, water on my face. <laughs> did you have to feel as if you were crying? Obviously, yeah. you looked as if yeah. you did. I did. Would you, yeah, would really? You, yeah. <laughs> would you have preferred to have cried naturally, or were you happy with Crawford throwing water over you? I don't know. They must have thrown a bucket. I didn't even know. <laughs> You'd have to get used to that. Bo Cox, the youngest ever Logie winner back in 1978. But Bert, well, the winner himself, always knew how to make the most of the moment. Oh. 
So, Patty. With me. Bert, control yourself, please. Thank you, Patty. Bert and I are all friends. <laughs> if we won't, we certainly are tonight. I can tell you that, sir. <laughs> You're not hiding Michael Chilberger there, are you? <laughs> oh, my heart's jumping up and down. Well, on both Don't sides, I might mention. Thank you. Congratulations. Oh. Mm -hmm. May I? Excuse us. Congratulations. <laughs> Of course you do. Congratulations. Thank Lovely. you. This is the girl I was telling you about, Patty, years ago, you know. It's not true. Lovely it's girl. Not true. Wouldn't know the old place now, though, would you? No, you wouldn't. I've won, I've won. It took so long to get up here from over there. But... Me too. Uh, I have a couple of people to thank. Um, my... Um... <laughs> There's my wife. <laughs> she seems so overcome. <laughs> she obviously has money in the show. <laughs> Actually, I would, uh, Mr Newton, would you mind... I did promise my mother, you know, that I was going to get the goal, Logie. Yeah. And would you mind... Um, would you mind taking the picture of, um, of Mr Winkler actually awarding me Certainly. this one again? Can I do what you know? You know, I'll colour it in gold later. She won't know the difference. <laughs> they didn't get TV week over in Malta. <laughs> Can I tell you, uh, with Noble, one of the most beautiful moments for me in the Logies happened a couple of years ago when you happened to come up on stage for something important. And you don't... I mean, you've rehearsed this. You believe you have. But this is one that I want to put in because I think it, it shows um, to everybody who watches television in Australia that people still care. Have a look at this. I don't take something like this for granted. I don't think it's anything to really... Well, it's fun and it's nice, but it's nothing to joke about and make fun of. And, uh, and I know you'll know that I mean this when I do it. Here, pal. Six months in your house and six months in mine. How's that, all right? You ruined my hair completely, for the, but I didn't mind. That was a, was I a lovely... I didn't realise what a headlock that was. That I just saw it. We would like to thank everybody in Victoria for voting for us, and uh, we try our best, we do our very best, and we try to bring you the true. best. We'd like to thank everybody and in Victoria, because <laughs> we try our best, and we do our best here in Victoria. And I'd like to say this, and I mean it sincerely. Hey, ho, 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 All right, we'll see you. Thank you, Is that Carmen? Carmen Van Hoogenhagen, 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 Hoogen? She looks beautiful. Lovely. Don, how about six months in your place and six months in mine? <laughs> I don't believe that Don is really a... I think he's an Australian who just came back. <laughs> oh, memories of the great years with Graham. I sincerely want to say to my wife, Patty, uh, six months on your side of the bed, six months on my side of the bed. <laughs> yeah, always with a tag. That's our Bertram. But, you know, I really wanted to pay him tribute, and so what I said came from the heart. Of course, this is not a perfect world, and Bert's had to take the rough with the smooth. But he's a fighter. When he joined the Logies Hall of Fame in 1988, he hadn't had a regular television job for three years. That night, he gave a famous speech. Whoa, here's just a taste. <laughs> I've been absolutely thrilled with the way in which I've been remembered by people today. It has been three years since I had the news broken to me by Patrice Fidgen from TV Week. <laughs> so, I was no longer with the Nine Network, <laughs> then confirmed only last Christmas by Ian Gow. <laughs> I, I have... Is Ian here, by the way? Is Ian Gow here this evening? A warm, wonderful man. Where is he? <laughs> Ian. Lovely. God bless you. Such nice people running television these days. <laughs> Remember the old days when we had creative people? Terrible days. Dreadful. <laughs> the most emotional thing for me today was to walk into the foyer of this hotel and I kid you not, and please as I say, I wish to remain 
modest. I had no less, I guess, than 150 people surge toward me, which was wonderful. I said to Jason and Carly, who came in with me, uh, <laughs> I would like to thank, I'd like to thank Peter, Peter Feynman. There is some sort of talk in the industry that Peter and I have had some sort of blue or whatever. This is not true at all. It's obviously just a case he's lost my phone number. Now, you know, you might think recycling is a new thing, but Bert's been doing it for years. Remember that line about Jason and Kylie? I had no less, I guess, than 150 people surge toward me, which was wonderful. I said to Jason and Carly, who came in with me, uh... Okay, here's that same gag reworked 13 years later. Coming into the, the Crown foyer, there are 500 people there shouting and screaming and throwing things. I said to Ricky Martin, who was walking in with me... Yeah, he's still got the magic. Let's see the rest of Bert's speech at the 2001 Logie Awards. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed. I accept this with much grace, and I do. <laughs> I'm here actually to present the... Thank you for that standing ovation, which uh, doesn't happen too often. I suppose you're thinking to yourself, well, it may be the last chance to... <laughs> Thank the old bastard, you know, I mean, who, who knows? Probably thinking to yourself, well, he's now doing morning television. Surely death is next. <laughs> That's what I, I was going to mention too. I mean, television really has changed, hasn't it? I mean, it's, it's all promotion now, advertising, getting it out there. I mean, in the old days, what we would simply have... Go, go, go. Recall the night that only threw one of those at Don? Wonderful night that night. Wasn't it? <laughs> Speaking. Okay, Paddy, won't be a sec. <laughs> the material's not good, but obviously the grog's flowing, which is good. <laughs> Nothing has changed. You know, when I was doing the Logies all those years ago, it was much more simple. You just. Arrived on the day, uh, you did a gag on Kamal. Uh, <laughs> you insulted an American guest. Gave the gold to Graham Kennedy. <laughs> and then spent most of the night avoiding going to bed with Molly Meldrum. But, <laughs> and I suppose some things never change. Can I just say sincerely, it is a pleasure to be here. Uh, tonight to, uh, to introduce <laughs> Molly is actually kissing my wife Patty over there a first for both of them well there you go I meant nothing I meant nothing good friend of mine, and I'm sure a good friend of yours, Mr. Bert Newton, on the show called In Melbourne Tonight. I don't want to jump into off and on, but really, when you come to consider it, Sammy and I are very... <laughs> are very similar, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I, I somehow, I, that slipped by me. I never noticed that, but I... I... Well, let me put it to you. Two fine comedians, two wonderful song and dance men, right. two fine impressionists, right. two great actors. Don't you, don't you think that you're just exaggerating just a little? 
Yes, Sam is not a great actor. <laughs> Thank not... you for the kind words that you said earlier. Pleasure. You look good. He's talking Thank about you. you saying he couldn't act. I did. That was written. That, that, that was... Uh... <laughs> he has lost none of his charm, I guess. <laughs> Still saving up food for the winter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my newest acquisition. See, this is one from, that everybody talks about, and it's a set. See, it matches the ring. And uh, I brought it over because I just wanted to let the people know that I wear all the jewelry and the, everybody makes fun of it, but I'm straight. Get the be no, just get the behind me, Satan. The uh, <laughs> and <Sarah> push. <laughs> ah, ah, oh my goodness! You know this that an eight by ten of this, which he's taking with the Hasselblad. An eight by ten of this will get you out of some of the best country clubs in Australia. <laughs> yeah. Some wonderful moments there with the late, great Sammy Davis Jr. Someone both Bert and I were proud to call a friend. He was a great surprise to our show. He made us international. Here in these archives, we've uncovered one of Bert's very early interviews with Sammy Davis. Now, watch out for two things. One is, if you're an interviewer holding a glass, a microphone, and a cigarette, you know that sooner or later, cigarette smoke will go up the guest's nose. So watch for that. The other is Bert's questioning technique. In the days before Molly Meldrum, it was unique. As you know, in Melbourne tonight, we try to introduce to you all the visiting people who arrive in Melbourne. Let me say right from the start, this is the way an interview should be conducted with a cigarette in one hand and a glass of Tarax in the other. Tonight I have the, the great pleasure of introducing to you Sammy Davis, Jr. Sammy, firstly, welcome to Melbourne. Well, thank you, Bert. Thank you very much. It's awfully nice to be back again. Do you think it's a little cold out here? Should we move inside? I was about to say that, because it's kind of chilly, man. <laughs> it is indeed. I had to leave the golf course today on account of it. I heard about this. Yeah. Let me sit across from you. Now, here. watch yeah, the smoke you. go in Sammy's face. This is the, the third visit to our fair land, isn't it? Yes, it is. How do you feel about it? I feel wonderful. I think it's, a, as I said yesterday to some of the guys in the press, that it is nice to come back and visit, because there's a need, I think, that a performer has to visit the people who have supported him in records and, uh, and motion pictures, you know. Sammy, I've, I've naturally, knowing that I'd have the chance and the opportunity, and a very pleasurable one of meeting you, I've watched every interview you've done so far, and I've, uh, I've read everything about you, but I do feel that perhaps the people who've spoken to you so far have taken uh, too deep uh, a thought into uh, sort of broad things rather than your, yourself. What I'd like to know is, uh, uh, apart from show business... I know hey, you, Bert, you love get to the it. point. It's, it's so obvious from your work and so obvious from, you know, your visits here so yeah. far. Apart from this and apart from working hard, what do you love most in this life? What, is, what does life mean to you? Well, Sammy eventually woke up. Now, we'd show you the full 14 minutes, but Bert would kill me. Bert's interview technique soon picked up. Although he was not always at ease, here he is with one of the original Les Girls, Stan Munro. Stan and I have known each other now for quite a number of years. Really? In the, <laughs> in the business. Man and boy. That's right. <laughs> it seems strange calling you Stan. You don't mind me calling you Stan, do no, you? No, I don't mind. Actually, I was wondering what to call you. <laughs> <laughs> Just call me. Uh, so, uh, you've also appeared in the Sydney production of Lay Girls, haven't you? Well, actually, do you mind if I get rid of these? Not at all. <laughs> Lovely. You don't use your own, do you? No, no well, no. what nature has forgotten, I fill up with cotton. <laughs> Stan, let me ask you one Do you mind if I have a cigarette? So, uh, certainly. Would you hold my stand, Mike? Uh, my, my, my mic stand. <laughs> I'll hold anything. There you are. Thank you. I've left mine in the machine. Would you like it lit? Yes, why not? Yeah. 
You fumbling bird, what's wrong? Well, it's just unusual stand to see you under these circumstances. <laughs> there you go. Right. What are they? Oh, uh, I prefer a camel. <laughs> I'm sure you get one too. Stan! <laughs> uh, and the sort of seeing how it is you're fiddling with yourself and everything. <laughs> well, it's, it's better to do it that way, I guess, than rather interfere with you, Stan. So. Bert made himself a target when he released records, specifically a dramatic recitative called The White Magnolia Tree. He turned it into a joke that ran for years. We'll start with a verse from the original poem. The year that she was 21, I that year was 23. That was the year, that was the spring, we planted the white magnolia tree. Joff, my poem isn't that bad. It wasn't that good either. <laughs> Joff, anyway, why are you crying? It, it, it's terrible, Bert. My wife went away and she said she wouldn't be back for a month. <laughs> oh, how sad. Yes, the month is up today. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Sing for, a song, thank you, you, Bert, for the... Uh, you got the guitar. I like, like, like your jacket, sorry. I'd like, to, I'd like to sing a song. With Would you. you go away and rehearse the white magnolia tree or something? <laughs> Youth is a thing of fire and ice and currents that run hot and white. And every day is as bright as the sun. And I was bloody 21. <laughs> That was the year, that was the spring, we planted the white magnolia tree. This tree, we said, would grow with us, and every year would grow anew. This was our life, this was our love, and the white mag... Government House, the city bars. What do you think you're doing? I'm helping the migration scheme. How? I'm showing two poles around Melbourne. Oh. <laughs> If I had to describe you, I'd say you are very close to an idiot. OK, I'll move away from you. <laughs> this was our love. And the white magnolia grew and grew. <laughs> oh, youth's a thing of fire and ice. And currents that run hot and white. And every day was as bright as the sun. And she was 21. And... <laughs> Tears and sorrow. I think I'm gonna cry. Hey, I'm you, lover. I'm the least. Hey, without you, beauty, I'm the beast. I'm dead. He's gone. I'm gone. Deceased without who? Without you. 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 Well, here it is. This is where it all began for Bert and Graham. Studio One. Bert was only 20 in 1959 when he dramatically announced on his Tonight Show that he was leaving Channel 7. He came here, made a 30-second ad with Graham Kennedy that went for nearly 20 minutes, and a partnership was born. Their comedy was based on conflict. Here, Bert, the staunch Catholic, has convinced his Protestant pal Kennedy to do some drumming for the St. Patrick's Day Parade. <laughs> Marist Brothers, here we go. Marist, Marist, Marist. Hold on. One, two, three. What happened? Did I go off then? You shouldn't do that, as a matter of fact, because... <laughs> do you remember that joke? Look out for the Indians. What Indians? <laughs> You'd never know that was part of an ad for shoes. As I've was got... this. I've got... Get up! Wait up! Wait up! Wait up! Wait up! Get 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 up!
Lots of nieces and nephews, and I know how to do this. And I can, I can give you some fun if you'll stay there. Yeah. <laughs> now, you watch this. Now, hit me and say, get up. Loved picking on each yes, other. I'm, Are you I'm certainly am ready. Cross that line. I'm a cross. <laughs> He's a <the> cross, really. <laughs> I said I'd always do this, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it on camera. And I'll do it to you right in front of thousands of people, and I don't care. <laughs> because that's the sort of bloke that I am. So we always said we do this, and I've got to do it tonight to prove a point. One, two, three, and we'll do it. One. Here we go. You ready? Yes. Well, all right. One, two, three. The duo was equally at home in sketch comedy. What gives you this sense of inadequacy? Well, you see, Doctor, all the men I know had relations with their wives before they married. Mm. I never had sex with my wife before we were married. Did you? I don't know. What was her maiden name? Dan. Yeah. I. Uh, I hope you won't mind, but uh, there's going to be another uh, stranger around the house. It'll mean more money for us. You mean? Yes. Oh, look, I, I, I couldn't be more pleased. <gasps> I didn't expect you to take it quite so well. Neither did I. <laughs> it's no use. I just can't seem to bridge the, the gap between us. I think I'll ring that marriage counsellor. Don't bother. Why not? I'm already here. <laughs> you know, there are many hours of Bert and Graham in the archives, but there's one piece which we play just about every year. It's the single most requested piece of black and white footage in the network. You ask for it, here it is. <laughs> Your Majesty! <laughs> Sneak up, I mean, I dropped all my dinner, frightened hell out of me. Pick up my dinner. <coughs> Your Majesty. <laughs> Pick it up again. <laughs> Pick all my dinner up. <laughs> Pick up my dinner. Pick that up at once. Our king is talking. If you don't pick that up, Bert, you won't be in the next series. <laughs>
while you make it. That's right. Keep it gay, keep it gay, keep it gay. Keep it gay. Now, before long, Bert fell in love, many times. But then one day, he met a starlet called Patty McGraw, who started here as a schoolgirl in pantomimes. Make believe you're in my arms now. Uh, that's Patty on the left. Drifting down the shiny Patty McGraw. Graham. We're making a star of Patty McGraw. She's already a star. You're gonna hear from me. A happy melody. It's such a catchy song that's bound to stay around and never let you free. I think she left her engine running. It wants to show you that I love you. It wants to tell you I'll be true. So how can we go? It's a romantic story. Bert chased Patty halfway round the world and proposed to her on an ocean liner. But the wonderful thing is how long their marriage has lasted. Coming from Hollywood, an international star like Debbie Reynolds could barely believe it. Um, somehow in show business, you know, we never have time to have a proper marriage. I don't know, did you have time to go off and have a honeymoon and all that? Did you do yes, that? Yes, yes. The first or second time? I've only been married once. Only one time? Mm -hmm. Don and I are just very good friends. <laughs> <laughs> Me, Jay. You, Tarzan. He, Cheetah. Patty was never married before. No. Isn't that fabulous? Mm. I, I don't know why, Debbie. It was just one of those things that seemed. <laughs> I met Patty, actually, uh, in this very studio. This is where we sort of caught it. I've got a girlfriend, a uh, Australian you? girl, uh, who at the moment is working in Manchester at the Golden Garter. Fine. Say, name, say happy Easter to her. Her name is Patty McGrath. She's working with Carolyn Pierce and Donna Reed at the Golden Garter in Manchester. I want to say I forgive you for everything. I... Congratulations. We've finally got him engaged to Patty. Thank you, Barry. All the best. Mm, Thanks, I'll kiss you. Thank you. She's over there looking lovely. I can remember Bert saying as we stood on the stairs, don't hurry, take it all in. Enjoy this, because this is a moment you never want to forget. I have been married for three happy years. Ah. Three out of six is not bad, is it? Oh, is it? <laughs> Does Bert snore? Only when he's on his back. <laughs> I we do thank you. Yeah, yeah. The lady there. A couple of segments before the end. You know it's time for the wheel. It was always what Bert did best. <laughs> sorry, after I'm you, Don. Sorry. No, 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 I beg your pardon. No, you, it's you should right. do it. Wait a minute, I'll Don. You I'm speak to it. Okay, okay. Hello, uh, Joan. Yes. Wait on. Wait, wait a minute. Hang on a sec, Joan. Will you? <laughs> Don won't be long. Joan. You've got a lovely voice. Thank you. Are you married, Mrs. Gimber? Yes, I am. <laughs> She wouldn't call Mrs. Gimba. She was married. <laughs> you could just about touch us. Yes, yes. I'm just stretch my hand out of the TV. <laughs> <laughs> she could stretch her hand okay, out of the TV. Okay, I'll show you the best no, no. <laughs> You spoil all my fun. Not mine. Hang on a minute. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you got your choice there, girl. I'll take my jacket off for you, too. No, Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, di- oh. <laughs> <laughs> Two hairs and a St. Christopher. Where, where's the... Ah, that's better. Is that better, Gail? That's better, yes. Oh! <laughs> Lindley, number nine! This is a marvellous right? prize. You discover the pleasures of the Pacific's Shh, best I'll kept... I'll never <laughs> <laughs> It's from... It's from Air New Guinea. Now, you've, you've flown Air New Guinea, haven't Air you? Air New Guinea? The so, lucky girl. Yes, it's a wonderful airline, it's isn't it? marvellous, particularly if they close the doors. <laughs> now, Australian states have so many laws about lotteries and giveaways and promotions 
that the wheel could never be a game of pure luck or chance. Legally, we had to ask every contestant a general knowledge question. This made it a legitimate game of skill. Although sometimes the skill was Bert's <laughs> and the general knowledge was very broad. On a very serious note, I, yes, in, no, in no way at all can I help you with the question. I cannot help you at all with the question, perhaps with the answer, but not the question. <laughs> what is the name of the black and white American animal? <laughs> The capital of Mongolia is Ulaanbaatar. It has a population of 78,416. Name the Lord Mayor. The question being asked of Dulcie is, how much water do we have on this earth of ours? Is it 25%? 50%? Seven. 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 Or 100%. We ask for complete quiet and no helping. Okay. Who is the legendary Swiss patriot who shot an apple in his son's head? On his son's, threw it over his Shot son's. an apple from his son's from head. From his son's head. Listen, I tell you, hang on, hang on a sec. Hang on, we are. Our lead, lead. our lead trouble player, his name is William. William Maytel. <laughs> What proportion of the Earth's surface is occupied by water? 25 percent? 50 percent? 75? Or 100 percent? From total professionals to uh, enthusiastic amateurs. Here's a contestant from New Faces with Bert Newton. I, I, see, I couldn't judge that act because I didn't watch the ballet once. <laughs> very, very interesting. And as I said before, the last time you were on the... Hello, Rani. Oh, yeah, Bert. How are you? Thank you, how are you? I'm, I'm fine, thank you. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you very much indeed. It's terribly important, Rani, for the show. Could I have your phone number, please? We might need to come. <laughs> no, 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 please, no. Kamal will be on the phone all day tomorrow. <laughs> Can I ask you, Rani, are you married? Oh, no. Have you ever stayed still enough to be married? <laughs> really? This week to Act Four now, Audrey Bennett from Victoria, who's a creative dancer. This is her first television appearance, and tonight she's got for you Ice Castles. Act Four from Victoria, Audrey Bennett. <laughs> from Victoria, Act 4, and uh, Ice Castle. Describe How's this for a diplomatic answer. approach? I should say that uh, Audrey does a lot of charity work, too. Good to see. Look, I, that is an, it's not the first time I've seen that. Don's got one of those, but... Has he? <laughs> Be a ballroom dancer, I didn't certainly you? did until I ran out of room. <laughs> Can't handle it. What has Travolta got that I haven't got? <laughs> Whoa! Okay. Sorry. You come here often? No, I think it's bird. <laughs> Well, we've almost come to the end of tonight's show. Albert Watson Newton spent more than half his career in front of a live studio audience in here. But it's also where many of the most important events in his life took place. This was where he learned his craft.
but it was also where he fell in love, announced his engagement many times, and to all sorts of girls, as well as his eventual happy marriage. It's where he announced the birth of his kids and introduced them to the camera. In two hours tonight, we've hardly touched the surface of the many thousands of hours he dedicated to entertaining people. For years, they called Bert the best second banana in the business. But in many ways, he's really second to none. Good night. Thank you.